is Christina, and this is vlog number three in a short series of vlogs about media literacy. My intention this week was to do a review of the documentary Please Subscribe, which is about YouTubers, their content, uh, but unfortunately I just didn't, I couldn't do it. So instead, I have a few articles that I found from some previous research I did um, about a year ago, and so here are those articles. The first one is titled, The Book and the Screen, A New Paradigm of Reading and a New Type of Culture by Ivan Sorin. We have entered the digital era and over the last few decades have seen a shift towards the digitization of everything. Technology is now a support to the human experience. Computers, laptops, smartphones, and tablets, and other such devices have multifunctional uses for communication and entertainment, but they also provide a way for humans to enter into utopia or potentially even a dystopia, which creates an alternative to real life existence. However, these worlds are vastly different than what a book could provide. A screen doesn't require Require the same intensity as the book does in terms of imagination. This article focuses on the differences between reading a physical book and reading online. And while it does kind of tend to demonize technology, it does conclude that the book and the digital version can coexist in this world. The second article is titled Reinventing Us and was published by Susan Greenfield in 2008. This one is a little bit closer to the kind of research I'm doing now. The subtitle asks the question, what is technology doing to the human identity? In the article, according to one estimate, Children in Western Lake countries often spend up to six hours a day, or even more, using a computer screen. With this information, children are often experiencing two different worlds, both the real physical world that we live in, as well as their digital world. And what effect does this have on them cognitively? Likely, it means a lower attention span, but in the long term, the online digital world can shape how a person identifies and they can be whoever they want to be online. This article was written about 10 years ago so it does fail to mention the rise of social media because it wasn't quite as extensive as it was now in everybody's lives, but the article does bring up a few different personality types that someone can pigeonhole themselves into online. You can become the nobody, the anyone, the somebody, or it even brings up a fourth option of the Eureka which kind of embodies all four of those. The end of the article suggests that maybe future generations can hopefully become part of the Eureka personality uh, and become more wholesome online. It hasn't happened yet, despite the fact that there's been about 10 years since this article, and I don't believe it'll happen unless we begin to teach our kids how to act properly online. But maybe if we go further into the future? Two websites that are going to be very important to both parents and teachers going forward in media literacy. The first website is